No, no, radius also increases. She's no. right. Yeah, but it doesn't increase proportion. Okay, no, not, yeah. not very much, but yeah. yeah. To certain extent. Yeah. So when it increases, there are other stars. So it eats up those yeah, stars. Yeah, again, it, it does. becomes bigger. It becomes if there are stars there, it will go on. Science by itself is a very naturally interesting subject to young children. I mean, as it's nothing, it's nothing special about science. It's really, you're simply asking questions that seem very obvious to a child uh, right from birth onwards. A child is already looking at information through all its senses and is gathering and making sense of it. Science is nothing but that. We observe, we try to make sense of it, and then we try to predict and we do it. Such an intuition that is inborn in us should not be killed because of inappropriate communication or inappropriate interest in the subjects. Science communication needs to become a program of study, right? It is not just visual communication. It has an education component. It has a public participation component. Uh, it has a, a scientific knowledge component. So I think science communication is in itself a field of study, right? So I think that is what Shishti can contribute. We were looking at this whole new artistic practices that were being uh, followed in, in these new areas of science, in, in this area of space. And Joanna Griffin had come to Srishti at the time as an artist in residence. And, and she spent another entire one year working with, especially with ISRO, with Indian Institute of Astrophysics, with a little bit with the planetarium. I mean, the whole thing is absolutely maddening. <laughs> Because you start off as an artist, you realise that there's an area of life that artists aren't involved in at all, many areas of life. And science institutes has been one of them, so there's been quite a lot of artists who've started to want to work with science institutes because when I, when I went to a space science lab, it was like this treasure trove of kind of incredible, incredible things like no, well, knowledge about the sun, for instance, and um, experiments about capturing space dust. I mean, stuff that sparks the imagination and stuff that, as an artist, you'd really like to get to grips with. Uh, above all, you know, individual scientists have been very enthusiastic and that is what counts. And so organizations like Planetarium, the VITM Museum, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, all of them have been doing some kind of science popularization in some way or the other. But it, it was felt that maybe something bigger could be done if all these institutions collaborated. Uh, so that's how the idea came about. This is an opportunity where you know, we could actually uh, rub shoulders and come together, collaborate in a longer period. And then that gave us a lot of uh, insight into, you know, especially with the school, uh, Sritchi School of Art, when we had never tried that experiment. The response was tremendous and a very, very large number of uh, especially students came uh, to the festival. I mean, I'm a very old man. <laughs> I enjoyed it and I learned some things which I don't know. I mean, I, rather I didn't know. And uh, in that sense, it's, it's a beautiful exhibition. And I, I also sense the great uh, spontaneous uh, enjoyment on the faces of the children and that is very nice because that's the first thing I want to see that science is fun. Uh. More than inf in information it is inspiration factor that triggered their imagination which will take them further in their course. So this is what I could find and, and that I think is the main thing of any communication to inspire you know to evoke that awe factor and so that they are on their own to find out more. 
No, only. Uh, no, I I don't know actually that one, but I want to become like Kalpana Chawla. <laughs>